I hate snakes and so I'm really glad that the biggest snake of all time, the Titanobo, is extinct. But what if it wasn't? Can you immediately name the largest snake in the world? This is the name of a very famous horror movie, Anaconda. Guess right, it's the Anaconda. If we pair it with the largest crocodile, Cassus, weighing almost one ton, no, 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 there's no way that there was ever a crocodile that weighed one ton. Isn't one ton like over 2,000 pounds? I know, I know, I know. Okay, like alligators and crocodiles, they are pretty much, uh, uh, dinosaurs, and so they used to be way bigger ones. One ton is, no, I don't agree. Even if it's a fact, I don't agree. I disagree with your fact. Sorry, I disagree. Ha, huh, script for a new horror film, but these giants are just babies compared to those that once lived on Earth for a long time. Wait, there are crocodiles today that weigh up to one ton? I disagree. Take, for example, Kronosaurus. These two predators were a threat to all life both on land and in water. But what would happen if they still lived today? Could humanity survive, or would it be the end of us? Now, okay, realistically, guys, come on. Humans have the technology now to eliminate any species if we wanted to, right? Right? Like, like, snakes could never overthrow all humans, right? Like, no way. Now I'll tell you about the ancient monsters that terrorized. You'll learn when and where these monsters lived, and then we'll bring them to the present. You'll see whether these giants will capture our world and if people will be able to put up a fight. Something tells me that today it's going to be very hot. We literally have missiles. That's a great point. There was a great visual there of a little ship in a little submarine shooting missiles at the crocodile. What did the crocodile do? Nothing. You can't eat a missile, you can try to eat a missile. See what happens, buddy, see what happens. Before turning on the time machine, let's get to know our characters better. We'll start with Titanobo. This ancient snake lived about 58 million years ago, and, hey, I think it's time for your mom joke. Your mom's old, go ahead, go ahead, you got it out, bro. According to scientists, for at least 10 million years it was the largest predator on the planet. Its length reached 13 meters or 43 feet. That's 43 feet, that's like longer than my entire house. I don't even think my house is 43 feet long. It would literally go from one end all the way to the other end of my house just laying there. Oh no, 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 no. I hate this. Why am I watching this video? People have like arachnophobia where they are scared of spiders. I think I have that but for snakes, whatever that's called. I don't know, I hate them though. I'm scared of them. Whatever weight exceeded a ton. Can you imagine this giant? Here's an illustration for you, if you lay two giraffes on the ground, then Titanobo would still be longer. Or does that mean that Titanobo could have eaten a giraffe? I think it does. Like, have you ever seen a snake's mouth open? They gobble things up like they are gobblers. They swallow things whole. Wow, wow, woo, woo, woo. Hey, 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 it's crazy. Or you can just look at these two vertebrae. The model on the left belongs to the anaconda and on the right, Titanobo. It's zoomed in. There's no way that's real. That has to be zoomed in. It turns out that the largest snake living today is half the size of the ancient reptile, and the mega snake could reach one meter or three feet. It could easily swallow a young hippopotamus. Do you guys know how big hippos are? 
They weigh, I think that hippos weigh like multiple tons. I know that it said a young hippo, so I don't know if that means like a baby hippo or like, you know, an infant hippo or like a teenage hippo, really like what we're talking about. But all I know is hippos are really big and really fat and really heavy. I'm pretty sure though that when snakes consume animals that are that big, they just lay there. Like, the snake will eat it and then it can't move for like a week and it's just digesting something for like a week straight. You are fake news. I might have made that up. I do that sometimes. I just make things up. That was one of those times. True, in ancient times there were no hippos. Titanobo preferred to eat fish, and this monster could be found in dark swamps and rivers. In addition to fish, it could feast on crocodiles. It was a sophisticated killer. The giant monster attacked its victim and strangled it in its strong embrace, then the snake swallowed it whole and digested it for a long time. I honestly don't know which way I would rather go if I were attacked by a snake. I don't know if I'd rather die to poison, like a rattlesnake. If a rattlesnake bites you, it's poisonous. But then the giant snakes like anacondas, pythons, boa constrictors, they don't have poison, so they just wrap around you and they squeeze you. And I feel like the squeezing is probably better, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure that they like break all the bones in your body as they squeeze you, so that would also hurt really bad. It's really lose-lose. I don't know. Which one would you guys die to? This is a horrible question, I shouldn't ask, but I'm going to. Which one would you guys rather die to, a poisonous snake or a constrictive snake? The victim suffered a compression force comparable to one and a half times the weight of the Brooklyn Bridge. So come again, did I hear that right? Oh. Put in numbers, that's 28 kilograms per square cm or 400 pounds per square inch. Even though the Kronosaurus was smaller in size, it was also a very bloodthirsty predator. Its wide open mouth full of many small teeth speaks for itself, and the size of the predator is comparable to the dimensions of an orca, also called a killer whale. To be more precise, the Kronosaurus reached a length of more than 10 meters or 33 feet, and its weight could reach up to 12 tons. In its appearance, it was remotely similar to a modern crocodile, only in a very version. And even their bite strength is a close comparison. It was also a skilled swimmer that probably attacked its prey from the depths. Kronosaurus had a very powerful rib cage, for flippers, and a small tail. It literally gnawed at its victim, leaving no chance for survival. It kind of looks like a Mosasaurus, honestly, and I'm confused because like it says it's like the crocodile, but then it also is in the water all the time, and I thought crocodiles like are in swampy areas where it's not really deep water. But this dude seems to be in deep water. The ocean is also terrifying. Maybe I think this video is just proving to myself that I'm a big fat baby and I'm scared of a lot of things. I'm scared of the deep ocean, I'm scared of snakes, I don't like spiders. Kronosaurus couldn't have encountered Titanobo. They lived in different periods and even perhaps loved a different habitat. Kronosaurus could live in fairly cold southern seas, but Titanobo loved a hot climate. But this didn't stop the two predators from instilling fear and terror into all living creatures in the area. Now let's imagine that these two monsters didn't die out and that they still peacefully coexist with us. This is where I want to click off. Be peaceful? I don't want to know. Question, if Titanobo survived to this day, it could well be found in the equatorial tropics. For example, Titanobo would love the hot climate of Colombia or neighboring countries like Venezuela, Brazil, Ecuador, Peru, or Panama. I will never visit any of those countries anyway, 
just on a slight odd chance that even one of them somehow is still alive. I will never even consider going to any of those places. Obviously, people would have to more carefully protect their homes from the intrusion of Titanobo. However, it's unlikely that the snake could crawl unnoticed into a house. It would have no trouble knocking out a window or even breaking a door. Fortunately, this behavior is still unusual for snakes, but all the same, in order to protect themselves from intruders, people would have to surround their homes with high-voltage fences and keep a big stun gun under the pillow just in case. I just feel like a stun gun isn't going to do anything to a two-ton, 45-foot-long snake. I'm sorry, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. In mega cities, a huge snake would not have a single chance of survival. Only if the snake doesn't accidentally wind up somewhere under the heating man, the comfort that a reptile might appreciate. But food in the form of rats would hardly suit it. By the way, most likely she wouldn't be interested in people as a food source. In horror films, the anaconda often devours people. However, in reality, it rarely attacks a person. It can be assumed that its distant ancestor would also be indifferent to us. But for people, Titanobo could be a welcome trophy. Any zoo in the world would dream of getting such a valuable specimen, and its skin would be a real hunt. People who catch these huge snakes would become real national heroes. As for the super snake diet in our world, it would find something to eat, alligators, Turtles, river dolphins would suit the giant in all respects. I mean, the fact that it doesn't want to eat humans, that does give it plus one point. I will say so. Plus one point puts it at one total point. Congratulations, snakes. Animals on land would also have a hard time, giant armadillos, manatees, tapirs, cougars, jaguars, caimans, and Brazilian otters would be endangered. They could have just listed any single animal ever, and I would have been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, oh yeah, a lion. Titanobo would destroy a lion. Oh, a giraffe. Yeah, Titanobo would eat that too. What animal would not be in danger if that thing was alive? Sure, adults would be too big so cubs and young animals are what they need. It wouldn't mind eating fish since it's a more familiar diet. As a result, the food chain would be broken. Some animals would probably migrate to safer areas, but the fauna of the forest of Amazonia would be greatly impoverished. Although insects and fungi would start to flourish and evolve, very soon there'd be no trace of the once lush vegetation. Kranosaurus would hardly have liked life in our conditions either. In ancient times, even turtles were the size of a kitchen table. Eat just one and feel full all day. I thought sea turtles are still that big though. I swear sea turtles are like, like tortoises. What are they called? I don't know, the giant sea turtles. They are big, they are massive. They are as big as kitchen tables. What? But such a monster would need about a dozen modern turtles, and then I still doubt it would be enough to eat. In addition to turtles, the ancient monster fed on plesiosaurs, but in our world, he'd have to look for an alternative. Most likely it would switch to large marine mammals. It wouldn't be able to swallow a whale all at once, but in parts, then sure it could eat it completely. Such a huge body would need tons of food. Like a giant meat grinder, it would sweep away everything in its path. People would suffer greatly due to a shortage of fish in the seas and oceans. Fishing itself would be very risky due to the existence of an underwater hazard. No, there's no way it's that dangerous. That would make fishing like that scary. I mean, there are monsters in the ocean today. 
There's like giant whales, first of all, like blue whales, humpback whales, all those things. And then there's also killer sharks. There's great white sharks. And my point is, no one cares about those and those things are massive. I'm saying this thing's probably bigger and scarier, but like, come on, it's not like this. It's not going to make you not fish. Ships would have to be built to be much more solid, and in the event of the extinction of whales, a climatic catastrophe would begin. There would be nothing to act thousands of tons of carbon from the air. In the underwater depths, there would be a daily battle for life. Given the size of the monster and its ferocious disposition, there could only be one winner. I don't know if I believe that. This dude is pretty much saying that this one animal being reintroduced into the world would destroy like all of life. No, come on. That's ridiculous. We'd have to forget about tourism and sea traffic in the monster habitat completely. This place would be marked on all maps in red, and anyone who dared to go there would practically write their own death sentence. If Titanobo had the most valuable skin, then a Kronosaurus would have had its teeth small and sharp like a saw. They could cost more than the horns of a rhino. Today they are one of the most expensive materials in the world. Their price is about $65,000 per kilogram, more expensive than gold. By the way, did you know that there's a danger of the return of extinct animals to Earth? I'm not joking right now. Scientists don't rule out the possibility. First of all, I'm talking about Titanobo. There's speculation that it lived at a temperature of 32 degrees Celsius 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and given the growth rate of global warming, such average temperatures can become a reality. Glad it will take millions of years. Would you like to see ancient monsters? Listen, don't listen to them. Don't listen to the guy who probably studied his entire life to make videos like this and probably knows so much about everything. Listen to me. The animals aren't that big anymore because there's not as much oxygen in the air. And that is why animals used to be so much bigger. It's because there was so much more oxygen. But anyway, if you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like on it and click right here to watch another awesome.